that New Britain document in and of itself contains the basis for how they will implement globalist plans like UBI, like digital ID. You know, you'll have your minimum government infrastructure yes. and there will be a big data system that makes sure you get your quota of the yes. minimum infrastructure guarantee and that guarantee will be held to a 15-minute yeah. <laughs> roughly sized locale that's part of this new regionality to further increase the democracy in the UK. Oh, you see, this whole system is part of a wider global system, which each country has each of their own systems. And we go to the council and we decide that it's, it's really just it's to make people go, uh, and surrenders to the I mean, fact that they, they don't understand the process. I mean, go, ba go back one step, uh, yeah, to the, yeah. the slide. Imagine this, yeah. and this is one country, and then you have representatives from each council of the nations and regions in each nation and region. <laughs> so you go to the council of the nations and regions of nations and regions, and that you know there's a million fucking representatives, and it's Tony Blair's wet dream because it's global EU, and it never gets anywhere. And as you say, only those who understand in and out and understand it's a facade can make the gears mesh. Yes. Uh, thank you, another cynical Brits, for the five pounds there. And you're right; this is a system deliberately designed for people who know that the system is fake. And if you believe the system is real, then this will simply just tie you up in it. It's kind of genius. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's awful, but it's kind of genius. Um, immigration will come down, even if only in a narrative sense. Even if only in a narrative sense. Immigration, this is the big problem for basically everybody who wants to create a political energy after the election because immigration will come down. I know people crime saying will come down. Crime will come down. It's the line, you know, it's the good line and the bad line. It, you know, it won't really come down, but everyone will swear blind to you. The immigration and crime after the Tory mismanagement at the end of the four years or five years of Starmer will have come down. Because What's... quite simply, it is unsustainable, even within within their own bureaucracy, can... what they've been doing. We can we can link this back to one of the earlier points though. What is one of the main bodies that repeatedly stops, at least what we are told, the Tory party ministers getting people deported? The Supreme Court. Yes. No. I think in Starmer world, Tony Blair basically taps the shoulder of whoever's at the top of the Supreme Court and says, now that we're in charge, you are going to let us deport people. And it'll just happen. Yes. <laughs> but it's, it's just that simple. And it is only... I think it's only until you realise that these people are above and beyond all ideas. Yes. That it makes sense. <laughs> Well, it's, again, um, a lot of the restriction, in quotes, or the controls, they say, the mm. controls will be contingent on the technocratic policy. You'll have mandatory digital ID cards, uh, which has been continuously and forcefully brought back onto the table over the last couple of years. It's yep. been dis dis emphasized now the election is going on, but it's still there, it's still floated, and it's still the plan. That is still their big idea of how to bring down immigration numbers is a mandatory digital ID system for the whole of the UK. That is their big idea, and it was Blair's big idea for ID cards, and if, if you think like a technocrat, that makes sense. Yes, <laughs> which is why, of course, uh, our mandatory ID system will also yes. have to be developed in partnership with a mandatory ID system across the EU. Of course, And yes. that there will have to be a regulatory alignment during the process of that development so that there is not any bumps along the way. Well, we've we've talked about again. It is it, I cannot emphasize to you enough how important it is that the the most evil things you do are the most boring. Yes, that is again. That is why the New Britain document is how it is. But now we must talk about the release valve. We must talk about what will happen, kind of in the immediate term post election, and why really the political energy you feel now. Is only about to switch. Yes, it's about it's 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 gonna it's gonna go away and it's gonna switch in many ways. Negative sentiment towards the regime will be shifted onto the outgoing Sunak government in the same way Blair was sold as a clean break from the nineteen ninety seven Tory doldrums. 
you'll act as an effigy, a sacrificial lamb onto which the sins of the managerial machine as a whole are shifted onto. Yes. This is the ultimate purpose of the performance that is the peaceful handover of power, to convince you there is not a permanent regime with a permanent agenda. Unfortunately, zero seats could actually act as a release valve, letting people think they've sufficiently punished the Tories and allowing sympathy for their inevitable fusion with reform and Tufton Street as a new conservatives movement, one more neocon than ever in the American mold. Equally, the massive Labour victory on a down-the-middle neoliberal strategy will allow them to portray the election as a referendum on the politics of both the Tories and reform, and use it to say that the issues at hand, namely immigration, multiculturalism, yes. integration, these things have been settled, and the country overwhelmingly trusts Labour's policy on these subjects. The other side of this is obviously that there will be very, very naked consensus government. Mm. But I think that that is something that they think they can survive. It'll be, I, I do think it'll be quite fertile ground for us to show that in, in such forward terms, but these will be their arguments. Yes. And unfortunately, this is the other side. This is the judo that could be done on the idea of destroying the Tory party's electoral force without disengaging from the process entirely. Yes, and as a final point, just to re-emphasise it, there is almost infinite narrative power to be gained from pulling this all off. Three, four years down the line, if Starmer's regime is sans some sort of unforeseen disaster, they are guaranteed, and people can take my word on this, to have millions of people who think to themselves that it was the Tories and fundamentally Tory mm. ideas that sunk Britain over the last 15 years. They will not see that it was just more naked and better integrated technocracy on Labour's part. Rather, in their minds, it will be the right, quote-unquote, that will have been at fault all this time. That it's right-wing ideas. That these were the things that we allowed ourselves to get caught up in as fantasies. And people like Boris Johnson, they're the ones that ruined it for us. Because the adults are back in charge. <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, there's a few more things I want to get through before we end up going here. Don't worry, guys, we're, we're, we're not out of material, but there's a wider discussion, I think, in a small part to do with the, the, the legitimization of the process. I know we're going to announce it more when we get close to the time, probably next time we stream. Will be the last time we stream for a little while mm. because we're, what we are advocating for really and what we will be doing ourselves is the week of the election switch off we will not be talking about it the election is a foregone conclusion the election doesn't matter the number of seats i'm afraid that the tory party get will probably hover in the 50s to the 70s they can't be wiped out because the boomer vote uh really what fun fundamental the patronage network that keeps the tory yes. party alive isn't going to go anywhere and that's something we're going to discuss next week fundamentally Elections are not real. They are a collective ritual which the entirety of a civilization engages in so that they can watch the political divination unfold before them. Even just sitting there watching the votes come in on your 24-hour election late night super stream or whatever it is that other people are going to be doing is buying into this mythos. Yes. And that mythos needs to be destroyed I, as i i i we've got a lot of people watching i will i as much as i enjoy the energy of it as, as much as it is the best thing you can do with quote-unquote electoral politics zero seats is still a project of electoral politics yes it still believes that punishing the tory party in quotes to the ballot box is going to accomplish something concrete when really unfortunately it won't. It'll mm. feel good, and there might be some stuff, you know, shook loose from the trees, and it's, you know, it's good fun to have your two minutes hate with the Tory party, but ultimately, it still buys into the process. We will not be talking about the election as it happens. The election has already, you must think about it like it has already yes. happened. Do not think that the election will change anything. Do not think the election matters. Do not think the election is genuine. Do not think this is the process by which the handover of power happens. Do not believe in the process. You must exist in the political future. People get mad at us for doing so, but this has been a foregone conclusion for years. I, I might see if I can <laughs> if I can even engage in a bit of a bit of 
friend of the working man style analysis here. Man City have just gone and won uh, whatever Premier League or whatever this year, champ, whatever, whatever the English big like, league is. And they've, got, yes. they've got all these charges against them, blah, blah, blah. Let's say, for example, the legal entity of Manchester City, the team, goes down south. You know, it, it goes to complete pot. But the same football players, maybe with a couple of extra charismatic additions, play in the same stadium in front of the same fans against the same different teams and play to the same rules. What, what, you, what you call it, it matters not. Because whether it's reform or whether it's or the Tory party or it's some synthesis of the two, the backers, the people involved in it and the people that turn up to make it part of a ritual are all still going to be there. Yes. I mean, this is something I think should be most fundamentally understood by people who are like us. Going around and fomenting populist dissent without having a foolproof method for capturing that dissent and using it yourself is shooting yourself in the foot. Because you're winding millions of people up and engaging them for action and you're giving them no scope to use it. You're giving Someone them else go. will. Yes, if you create political energy, you better be able to harness it, or else somebody else will. And ultimately, that is the reason that, as I said, the election has already happened. Starmer has already won. You must exist in the political future, and you must look at what will happen when things get better from the point of view of the mass man, of the average Briton. Because... In two years' time, you're going to hear nothing but people singing Starmer's praises because he can lift the boots off the neck of certain parts of Britain and he can do it by waving a magic wand because he has always been able to do it when he has cycled in. Yeah. And that has always been the way that they will garner legitimacy. Um, I, I'll, I, again, I, I agree with making fun of the process, but there's only so much you can do. And I said, we will not legitimize the process. There will be no election coverage from us because, again, it doesn't matter. It's a foregone conclusion. Uh, you should deglobalize your mind, disengage from it, and try and remove yourself from the election fever, from the massive time sink that is studying polls, that is studying the amounts of seats that the Tories will get. It actually doesn't matter what size the Labour majority is, yeah. apart from... You know, the fact that they'll have to govern in a nakedly consensus sense, which I think they were going to do anyway. Anyway. Well, why else is <laughs> Rishi Sunak there? I, I mean, I, I don't want to have to grab people by the scruff of their neck and, like, slap them around. Oops, sorry, I, I bumped a little box. The microphone's on there. My apologies, headphone users. Yes. But Rishi Sunak is there because he's supposed to lose. Yes. He doesn't turn up at the DD event properly because you're supposed I mean, to look hate at him. him. Look at him. He's sat, he's sat there with the world jack eyes on. He's like he's like the woke activists yes. of six, seven years ago. Do you actually believe anyone was trying to sell you Rishi Sunak as a charismatic leader? Do you think they're that fucking stupid? Because I can guarantee you. They are not. <laughs> All the effort, two leadership contests where they were told to vote again, mm. and then the removal of the winner uh, to, to get that man into place so he can performatively lose. Yes. <laughs> that, that's, that's what it's all about. <laughs> you, you, you put your ballot in, your ballot out, and you do the okie-dokie.